faith commanded and the mountains move and fear is losing ground in our hope in you unstoppable God let your glory go on and on impossible things in your name shall be done and freedom conquered all our chains undone and sin defeated Jesus has overcome and mercy triumphed when the third day dawned Darkness was denied when the stone was gone. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name shall be done. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name shall be done nothing shall be impossible your kingdom reigns unstoppable we'll shout your praise forevermore Jesus, our God, unstoppable, nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable, we'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable, unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name shall be done Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on Impossible things in your name shall be done Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on things in your name shall be done Welcome to Holy Week. My name is Latasha Lancaster and I have the privilege of sharing with you a devotional based on Mark chapter 4 verses 35 through 41 and it reads, On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great storm, a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with, and they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Tucked away in this text are four great questions that does not get an answer. The first one, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? When life storms are drowning us and we can't seem to come up for air, we can relate to this question. Jesus, do you not care that I am perishing? The second set of questions come from Jesus. Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? 
Jesus knew that the disciples didn't fully comprehend who he was. And now he was revealing that truth to them. The disciples had witnessed Jesus perform miracles. They listened to his teaching and preaching and saw his love and compassion. Yet when a storm arrived, it overwhelmed them. It overpowered them with fear. In the book, Embrace, Lisa Turkhurst says, what we see will violate what we know unless what we know dictates what we see. The last question that was asked is by the disciples among themselves. Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Finally, the disciples are beginning to comprehend the divine nature of Jesus. What manner of man is this, you might be asking. Isaiah says, The government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus coming towards him, said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. Once, Je once Jesus was conversing with his disciples and he asked, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. When I was a child, my mom would play this song that I love called Millions by the gospel group, The Winans. And in that song, those lyrics continue to grip me as they did when I was a child. In that song, they talk about when they get to heaven and they see and talk to God. And one of them says, I'll just begin to cry. You'll wipe the tears from my eyes. I'll say thanks. You'll ask why. This will be my reply. You know that millions didn't make it, but I was one of the ones who did. Through hard trials and tribulations and persecutions, I made it over. And then later in the song, towards the end, another one steps in and says, John looked out and saw a multitude that no man can count. And I was in that number. I listened to that song recently, and then I called my children in to listen to the song with me. And when it was over, I told them about that multitude that John was um, talking about. And it is a reference in Revelation chapter seven, verse nine, which says, after this, I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the lamb. The multitude is believers who has put their faith in Jesus Christ. And I told my kids, I said, and I'll be in that number. This is this revelation is what John sees in the future. And I said, the chances are, or more than likely, I will die before you. And when I get to heaven, I'll be waiting for you. And I'll be looking for you. And I want you to show up. Make sure you're there. Don't stand me up. And I say the same to you. Be there. When the storms of life are raging on us, cling to the King. Remember, He is the one who can speak to your storms and say, peace, be still. Or He may let the storm continue to serve the purpose that He intended for it to serve. And He may say to your heart, peace, be still in the midst of your storm. Either way, be encouraged by what manner of man this is. It is He who will never leave you nor forsake you. It is he who in John 1, it speaks of as in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Then it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is the God of the impossible. Thank you for watching. If you want to learn more about this Jesus I've been talking about, visit our website at refreshcommunity.church and click on the Jesus tab. Thank you.